suppressive diseases. One of the diseases that proliferated the universe in 1980, 1979. During those two years, I was not yet a nurse. I was still working in an ancillary position in one of the area home hospitals. It was not home hospital. It was one of the area home hospitals. I repeat that because people will uh, hear things and uh, say things differently, and it was not home hospital. However, um, in those areas, there was a huge outbreak of the ARC virus that turned into HIV virus and um, the uh, HIV virus turning into AIDS. And how and why it did that back in the 80s have a high mortality rate than it does now. And uh, in the later 80s, um, after antivirals were um, produced, for those who took them, versus for those who did not, what those life expectancies were and how they were studied, how they were, how they're viewed amongst nurses. There are many nurses that said, oh, I've seen this disease before. I've seen this disease grow from um, the 1970s. And then you have nurses that will say, I have never seen that disease ever before. It has never been a disease that I've treated before, or a disease that uh, was treated with uh, such an aggression, such a, a panic and out, out, outcry, um, that I don't understand why you say you've seen it before. I want to interview some of those nurses that say they've seen it, and why uh, they feel that because it was something that they they saw or was it because of the actual lab values, the actual disease uh, syndrome. We'll talk about why uh, it was such a deadly disease and how it was treated back then and whether or not that was a cause opposed to whether or not it was not a cause. Um, we'll talk about how different communities were treated. We'll talk about how it has grown into today as HIV is not as uh, it was in the 80s and the 90s. Um, I want to talk about the drugs that we use, uh, how they were made, the chemical makeup of, of some of the drugs, and we'll talk to uh, chemists, we'll talk to uh, drug suppliers, um, and see if they can be honest about some of the uh, things that are, are going on within that disease itself, the immunosuppressive diseases. Diseases like cancer, um, the diseases like uh, neurological neuropathy, those types of neuro diseases, um, and uh, dementia. Why I picked those uh, early on to talk about with nurses is because those are the big, big deals right now. Um, those are the diseases that are being treated right now, the cancers and the, and the HIV and AIDS uh, community. Um, I will also talk about uh, the cost and the uh, cost for different drugs and how um, if you're a poor person, as, as some of the legal terms are used in some of the civil, civil uh, court, uh, in the civil court industry, how they call us uh, poor people opposed to people who historically have money throughout their lives, who um, them to have had contact with um, some long-term life diseases like uh, um, blood disorders, or like uh, P PNH, or uh, hereditary angioedema, um, Febreze disease, many disease processes. Um, I can go on. Um, with many diseases that require specialty drugs and specialty pharmacies, and uh, we'll talk about that. We'll talk to nurses about that. We'll talk to nurses on how they view the pharmaceutical industry's uh, uh, challenges and um, how they would uh, use us as a necessary evil opposed to learn from us or, um, or um, be become educated in that area. Because nurses themselves have uh, not really uh, entered the 
business aspect of the industry as much as men have. And um, one, of, one of the uh, discussions we will have is nurses uh, entering the business world uh, and um, how that has proliferated. But uh, immunosuppressive disorder, um, HIV, um, the way I had seen it grow from 1988 when I was an ancillary worker to now a, a nurse uh, specialist, I uh, don't see that disease as being something I've seen before. It was something for me um, that had a panic to it where um, the practitioners, doctors, nurses panicked on uh, ancillary workers like myself just wanted to get away from it because um, people were so sick and dying from it so quickly. Um, it was um, very, 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 very scary. Um, I lost many friends. Um, the names go um, into the hundreds. Um, I've lost many friends in that, in that time. They were uh, mostly either homosexual or bisexual, and like today they call them people on the down low. I call them people who have not been able to release themselves from the constraints of their belief of how to have sex or why they're even having sex with who they have sex with. So um, sex itself is a, has a lot of either religious or community or family beliefs, uh, but um, sex um, um, in itself to me is not that. It is something that someone uh, tries to identify as a, as a young teenager, and it's mostly talked about on how it should be in your home. And uh, with that always embedded in your mind, um, uh, you then tend to uh, be categorized. It could be a flick of a wrist that you're homosexual, or, or the manchoism when you bow, uh, or walk side to side, or have your pants hanging halfway down your butt today. Um, I'm not talking negative about it in that sense because when I was younger, we used to wear tight pants, and um, we were we were uh, not as harshly judged. Um, um, but again, the immunosuppressive disorder during that time in the 80s was a panic by practitioners. Today, um, before I get to today, in the 90s, again. Um, that was a disease that slowed down after the panic and um, the way they treated it. I want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about it right now until I have some uh, nurses here with me that um, we can either back each, other, back each other up or uh, agree to disagree on s topics like uh, the uh, use of the types of drugs that were used to treat a virus because the disease itself what we've learned out of that panic initially was that it was a virus and it caused all these uh, syndromes. And um, present day antivirals and what we look at antivirals as opposed to what antivirals actually do. Um, from what I remember, when I had a virus, um, I was offered chicken, chicken soup and the reason for being offered chicken soup was because it had been grown with uh, uh, um, antibiotics given to these chickens. Now, that whole discussion will be discussed by nurses in a real form, um, where we view it differently than, a lot of times differently, than our medical practitioners um, have learned to treat these diseases on a, a protocol basis, opposed to the actual a reason for treating a disease at a specific time to treat that disease. And we'll talk about that. Um, HIV um, turning into AIDS, does it always happen? Um, does it always happen in a specified amount of time? Um, does it, um, does uh, some people become immune and they don't fall into AIDS? Um, I want to talk about that. I want many nurses that have come in contact with uh, the infectious disease population in that, in that area um, and how they are treated today, present day, from public hospitals to the private sector <coughs> and some of our 
uh, hospitals that are uh, considered magnet status hospitals with the continuation of, of practitioners that have the highest esteem uh, in their positions. I've learned a lot. I've been a lot of places in this field. Um, um, I've seen some of the best, best care in this country, in this state given. And uh, I have to say, I've seen some other states that are very challenging. I, I was in uh, the South, I won't say where, but in the South, they are doing great advanced treatments um, that you wouldn't believe when it comes to the pathways of uh, the uh, treatment in an emergency situation and how timely it is done, how uh, it's executed, and how the recovery process has been. I have to say, though, that um, if we could take more interest in our nurses and our registered nurses that are willing to learn, willing to precept other nurses without um, an aggression, without um, personalities being so strong opposed to teaching and I've had some but you know teachers for me are the best in the world why they're being treated like this um, really is beyond me because when I was growing up I grew up very very, very poor in Harlem I was when I was brought home I was told I was brought home and they didn't have a place for me to sleep, so they uh, made a drawer, a nice soft drawer, and put me in the drawer. And um, I, I tell you, you know, when I see the differences and why they exist, it eludes me to, to no end on why we are where we are today without better health care and better decision making by our politicians. Most of them need to ask questions from, from more of the uh, ancillary staff that they consider as non-professional or ask questions about um, what they think they need education in because that would help on another level, on a grassroots level where people are not so fearful um, and um, so fearful of the medical profession. It's a great amount of fear. Um, I just lost a patient that um, he'd rather not go uh, for an emergency treatment after falling and um, unfortunately sustained a, um, a heart attack from that um, as, as uh, the history went from that fall young. And um, yes, we are getting older, but that topic as well um, is not clearly defined. And uh, because there's, yes, we're getting older, but there's a lot more people today. Welcome back to the Mike Nurse Talk Show. We're going to continue with the uh, immunosuppressive disorder, um, SAIDS, which is uh, the sexually transmitted disorder that was back in the 80s before it became AIDS. And during that time, most of the panic revolved around trying to treat that disease by our pra practitioners. And what they did then, um, in order to treat a virus, because it was the only thing they knew, the only thing that they could try, and it was a good try. Um, unfortunately, it's a practice, and in practicing anything, we fail at it <laughs> until we get professionals uh, with the finances and the studies to help back it. And uh, those, those drugs that were tr be being used at that time were bacterial static antibiotics that uh, were used in uh, multiple doses used uh, together, which make up a chemotherapeutic agent uh, suppressed. And in that, that was one of uh, our observations. Um, from a ancillary basis to now, which I have done my own studies uh, throughout different states on um, how that disease was so aggressively treated uh, in the beginning of the pandemic to uh, the mortality rate, how that uh, cross-referenced went. And some 
is uh, definitely uh, controversial. It can uh, also be viewed as a, a militant. Um, if you speak of it in these terms, HIV as well, um, once that diagnose um, came about, the, uh, the, the, the treatment itself was a lot better understood in the sense that yes, it was a virus, we needed this, an antiviral, we needed to call something an antiviral, we needed to use something that could fight a virus. But from our earlier days, there was nothing that could treat a virus. The doctor sent you home, told you to eat, drink, and eat, um, you know, drink orange juice, eat chicken soup, get plenty of rest. It will take its course, and uh, you will get better. Um, boil your water, all those things. Um, hand washing today is a huge deal. But AIDS itself is uh, uh, many faces. It has many faces. It has many um, strands, is what they're calling them. Uh, and uh, you never know what it's going to look like on a person. So with that, now we have many patients that are taking antivirals, but what are those antivirals and what do they do? When do we take them and why are we taking them? Is it because our doctors are just saying it's time to take take the, the, the uh, these uh, antivirals because it's uh, going to help you, or is it a protocol? Is it go is it is it something that's widely discussed as a, a holiday for you, or is it not? We'll talk about that. We'll talk about reasons for that. We'll have nurses call in and talk about that. We'll have nurses that will talk about that particular uh, specialty uh, in infectious disease as well. How they are um, taught to understand it and teach it, and then how the ones that go out on their own and do studies and uh, come back with information that um, either is something I agree with or I don't agree with um, is yet to be seen. Um, we will also talk about the uh, disease syndromes like what PC pneumonia um, and how that was treated opposed to the interferon and those drugs that um, back in, in um, the late 80s and early 90s when um, some of the nurses that precepted me and mentored me through nursing school um, really talked me into becoming a, a nurse because I wanted to be a dancer and um, told me that the, uh, the profession was a profession that I could grow in, that um, one of my supervisors, Pearlie Chang, she said, she said to me, she said, you know, you become a nurse, sky's the limit. And uh, I didn't understand what she meant because I was an ancillary worker. Um, I was uh, not really interested in academia at all. And um, she did see something in me uh, and uh, encouraged me, like some of the nurses, like Jeanette, um, who uh, went on to become a nurse practitioner in her field uh, at um, one of the area hospitals here in New York. And uh, she's also been an inspiration to me uh, to uh, have encouraged me to do what I do today, which is uh, help people uh, in their homes and educate and advocate for them for better health care and uh, better treatment and, and less labor intense experiences and passing uh, uh, hands from one practitioner to another and having that continued uh, feeding of good information, educated information, and know-how, and when you don't know, admit when you don't know, and move into uh, asking other professionals um, for real answers. Because you can always get an answer, uh, whether it's a, a real answer that you can go on and, 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 and get more studies from that will make sense, will be um, left to that individual receiving it. I uh, also want to say that um, I had experience uh, where a friend of mine was getting IV Bactrim, 
and IV Bactrim um, is a drug that was one of the drugs that was chosen to treat pneumonia, uh, the prevention of it, uh, PCP. And uh, I had seen a nurse, a uh, new nurse, working in a city hospital as I visited this patient, give the patient back to back uh, Bactrim, and I tried to stop him. I had to get a supervisor to um, take it down because he was giving back to back um, Bactrim of uh, a drug that was ne nephrotoxic and that ended up causing this particular patient to start hallucinating and thinking the IV pole was falling that wasn't. And uh, I knew uh, that um, then that this was not the hospital for him to be in. But uh, again, there's so many different issues that will revolve around that for someone like myself that um, does not need to be there. One of the things that did help was the practitioner, the yes, doctor. Those uh, yeah. drugs like Bactrim are nephrotoxic. And when you give them back to back, you're uh, causing a huge problem because your, your patient is already HIV positive with uh, other diseases uh, that are going on and you're giving a drug that's going to cause anemia, um, cause uh, many things that are going to leave them open to more problems. So when I mentioned that to the nurse, the nurse uh, was a male nurse actually of, a, of an Asian culture and he <coughs> told me, no, it's okay. And I told him, I said, it wasn't okay. I said, can I ask you uh, uh, to step over here for a second? And I asked him, I said, what makes you think it's okay? I said, you can't give back to back uh, back to him because that one was finishing when I came in. You took it down and you hung another one and I've never known back to him to be given back to back. Why would it be given back to back? And he told me, no, that's the way the doctor ordered it. So I sat there and I couldn't, and, you know, amazed, but now my friend is having hallucinations. And I uh, assured him I'd be right back. I went to the desk, I spoke to the supervisor in this city hospital, and I have to tell you, they did a good job of follow-up by making sure that that IV was stopped. He was hydrated um, with my suggestion that they probably needed to hydrate him now with not just drinking water, but some IV hydration so that it can uh, act immediately, which, again, um, should have also been followed um, because he was so immunosuppressed with uh, more labs that would have um, measured, uh, you know, the effect that it was having on him. That was not done while I was sitting there. They said that would be done, but by the time that would be done, it would be too late because it's now in his bloodstream, and it's gonna, it's it's gonna uh, lessen. So you won't really know the true effect that I was looking at. And then looking at uh, things from a nurse's eye is different than looking at things from an average eye, and sometimes than the attending's eye the medical practitioner. With that, that's why this particular show was go will hopefully be one of the best yet talk shows that will hit television because we need to know who is really the strong uh, backbone of healthcare. When you walk into an emergency room, the first thing you hear is nurse. Um, when you walk into a uh, institution <clears throat> and you want um, knowledgeable health as a nurse and, you know nurses are no longer just women so you know a lot of uh, lay per people the first thing they say is um, she some cultures everyone is she and um, many children today have uh, no understanding that um, they, they can see it that we're nurses after they're told, but in their books, they only see females as nurses. So that says a lot about uh, school and its education. At least I haven't 
been told by any of the pediatric uh, children that I've come in contact with uh, tell me that, uh, oh, they've seen in their books a uh, male figure as a nurse. But they do see female doctors uh, now um, as children as nurses. But the nursing spectrum on a whole um, really needs to have a public view and open divide between the doctor's de decision and the reasons why opposed to, um, juxtaposed to uh, nurses. The dichotomy between the two um, is uh, an animal that will be discussed hopefully here in our studio, the Mike uh, Harris um, studio. And uh, we'll talk about many, many uh, levels of diseases and its treatments and its protocols in many different areas. Come back. Yeah, HIV and AIDS have become something like what Chris Rock said back in the uh, 90s when he said, soon uh, HIV and AIDS is going to be like arthritis. We're going to be walking around and talking about, how's your HIV? How's your AIDS? And he's right. Um, because of the panic, he was able to come up with that and realize as a very young man, very intelligent young man, uh, that this particular disease, um, how it was being treated just from his perspective, just what he was looking at, um, was uh, definitely something that was treated out of panic. Um, today we have um, a lot of psychiatric disorders that are attached to that as well. But, and, um, what I want to talk about is, uh, in my next episode, is psychiatric disorders, or psychiatric nurses, and I would love to show you how some psychiatric nurses handle schizophrenia, handle bipolarism, handle uh, some of the diseases that are considered um, pathological in nature. No different than this young man who uh, went out on this rampage, but he had a lot of support in his uh, 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 insanity, obviously, um, uh, for that behavior to have already gone that far. Um, I want to talk about how nurses, when we're dealing with that in a very fresh level, when people are brought in uh, very, very uh, despondent, um, really, really out of control, have no coping mechanisms, and how we handle them. Sometimes we're just not done right. Um, and we're taught right, but the actual event itself and all those scenarios that circle around them, um, how uh, we handle them in different institutions, in different situations, in different scenarios is, um, is uh, remarkable. We have some of the greatest nurses, greatest psychiatric nurses that have handled many, many uh, diseases. And we'll talk about in our next episode, psychiatric nurses.